The biggest misunderstanding about victims and survivors is that once the immediate crisis is over, people seem to believe that, okay, they're safe, everything's okay now, you can move on with your life now, what's the problem now? There are so many different pieces of abuse. There, there's not just the physical, there's the emotional, there's the financial, there's the sexual. There are so many different pieces of abuse. We have to remember that the crisis does not end when survivors come into shelter. The nature of domestic violence means that it happens in the home. It happens where we live, it happens where we want people to feel the safest, where we should be able to relax the most and work on ourselves. So domestic violence becomes always a housing crisis in that our house is no longer safe and we need to get to a place of safety. And if you don't have your house, this is automatically a crisis. Because if you don't have a place to stay, if you don't have a place to lay your head at and be able to feed your family, you still have that stress. And it's hard. It's a hard place to be. I, and I only say that because I was homeless for years. I slept in cars with my kids and, you know, going to McDonald's and them washing up, going to school. So I understand those critical times of need and housing is that it brings that additional stress. And we have to realize that stress brings on health issues. And it also breaks down the family unit. It's important to know that 53% of women experiencing homelessness in Minnesota stayed in abusive situations because they did not have other housing options. And 37% of women experiencing homelessness in Minnesota lost their housing due to leaving an abusive situation. 67% of women who are experiencing homelessness in Minnesota are victim survivors of domestic violence. Victim survivors face unique challenges when they're searching for housing. In general, affordable housing in Minnesota is hard to come by. The stock is very low, incomes are very low, and that alone is a challenge. Survivors specifically are working on the trauma of their experience. They may have experienced financial abuse. They may have experienced emotional abuse that they haven't worked on. They may have experienced uh, abuse that resulted in them having a criminal charge. It may result in them having an eviction or poor housing history. Some of those can pile on top of each other and create a huge number of barriers that victim survivors experience when they're searching for housing. So we developed a program to work with women when they leave the shelter, which is, oh my God, so much needed. And along with that, having the uh, housing advocates to work with her to find housing as she's dealing with issues and her reestablishing herself in the community, may need to go to court, she may need to uh, have her children going into the school system to deal with issues with her children and being able to have someone to help her through that process. In our aftercare program, we want to help women find a market rate unit that is ultimately going to be affordable and sustainable for her. And we will use up to $8,000 during that year to help with rental support. But the great thing about the aftercare program is those funds are flexible because each of these women are so unique, her needs are unique, her family is unique, and we can use that to meet her right where she's at because it isn't just rent money, it's 12 months to work towards your own sustainability. And, and their thing is the best thing because they're the experts in their lives. We're not, we're just there for support. But they are the ones who, who start the journey once they're out of that situation and they walk and we just slowly walk through them. Or sometimes we walk a little faster depending on where, where a survivor is in their journey. But they are amazing survivors. I was so blessed because I got section eight and it was in a time where I was able to find decent housing. I got a decent job and I got, I was able to become a homeowner. So I was able to really spread my wings in an area that, um, that was so critical in my life to get established with four children, four teenagers. So I really think that women have to have housing. They have to have that. Um, so I think with some of those needs being met, 
we will help them become the champion in their lives that they can be. As housing prices continue to rise, I see more and more families struggle to make safe, decent, and affordable housing a reality. Even in the best of circumstances, it's not easy. But imagine trying to navigate the impossibilities of this housing market when your life has been turned upside down by abuse. Where do you go? How do you find stability? Domestic violence is a safety crisis, yes. It's also a housing crisis. We know that 67% of homeless women stay in unsafe situations because they have nowhere else to go. If we are truly going to break the cycle of domestic violence, we need to make sure the victim survivors and their families that leave our shelter can move to safe, affordable housing to build their new, safer lives. Donate today to provide housing advocacy services, rental assistance, and up to one year of support for women and families leaving our shelter program. Be part of creating the stability necessary to break the cycle of domestic violence. Please support our housing and aftercare program today.